Please don't forget to subscribe for more awesome vegan content. Hi vegan food explorers, I am of course your vegan food explorer and as many of you know I am climbing Mont Blanc which is Western Europe's highest mountain and I'm going to be flying out in one week today and we're going to be climbing that mountain which we cannot wait, cannot, cannot wait. But this video is going to be sharing some of the equipment that will help me on the climb and some of the equipment that I've used for my training which has thrown up some very interesting challenges being vegan. So let's get into it. Number one, we're going to talk about my Cirrus Alpine jacket made by a company called Rab, who are very famous in the mountaineering and hiking scene. So you can see it's super small, super light. And what is it? It is a jacket. So why has this caused me so much challenge in getting a high quality garment that is a thermal jacket like this? Well, I'll tell you, because traditionally a jacket like this would be filled in these layers with down and it would be a down jacket. This is not, and I'll explain what it's made from in a second. However, down down is made from feathers from ducks and geese. And of course, to get feathers from duck and geese, they have to kill an animal. So it's an amazing material, but we are not going to be using that as a vegan. Um, and it definitely threw up some challenges because I definitely hadn't really clocked that that's kind of what was in these jackets, but it's absolutely insane. And a lot of the big brands at the moment, they sell this high um, ethical down. That means that they give more care to the, the animals when they're alive. But at the end of the day, to get this material, they have to kill the animal. So you can imagine if that is what ethical down is, you can imagine, you probably don't even want to imagine what non-ethical down is. Um, where they have um, stories of animals being plucked live and things like that. We're not gonna go into that because it's absolutely bonkers and crazy and we don't even wanna go near that. So this is a Cirrus Alpine jacket. I've got it written down here because not only number one is it made with 100% recycled insulation. So the insulation here is recycled, but it is made by this material. It's Cirrus material. Um, and apparently it has down like warmth, packability, lightweight, and it's also water repellent. So in my experience, I have had several years ago, a down gilet, and I would say, so that is with feathers. I would say this, in my opinion, acts better. It's warmer, um, it's not, potentially it is a little bit heavier, but the warmth and the um, water repellency is just as good, if not better. Maybe I think you pay for it a little bit in weight, but very, very small. So I would say absolutely amazing. And this was the first, one of the first items I bought and it just showed me that if you're vegan, you definitely sometimes with certain things just have to do a little bit more research. But in 2022, the, the products are out there that is just as good and you can stay 100% vegan, care for the animals and it's awesome. So that's number one, that's a big one. Also my friend who I'm gonna be climbing with bought another a jacket that he thought was a down jacket. And I told him, oh, that's not actually a down jacket because I looked at it myself and it was one of the two options. And he was raving on about how good it was. So I was really, really pleased to say, oh, that's not actually down, that's synthetic down. So it's awesome. So even in a literal blind test, couldn't tell. Okay, so that's jacket number one. Number two, socks. So a lot of socks you'd think, oh, why can, um, why would socks be an issue? Well, a lot of socks are made with wool and a lot of socks are made with merino wool, which is a fantastic material. It can be lightweight, very um, comfortable, etc., etc. However, of course, that wool belongs to the sheep that it comes from. Um, and we don't believe in the exploitation of sheep or any different animals. So we look for these. I got these from Amazon. They're super, super comfy. They're a brand that I cannot pronounce. <laughs> um, but my father-in-law who is a massive hiker has them and really um, recommends them and so these are made from 80% cotton, 3% spandex and, the, and then 17% polyamide which is a waterproof and very durable material. I have later found out there are some weird environmental issues with the manufacture of polyamide um, but it is not derived from animals so in my mind made a good choice here. However, I'm definitely going to be researching the next time I buy socks for new different sorts, but just shows you, you can easily find non-wool socks. Hope that helps. Bought these from Amazon. So you're probably wondering what these are, but in training for this, I've been doing a 
hell of a lot of cardio and endurance um, exercise. However, I've also factored in a huge amount of strength training. That is because I had a really bad injury on my knee. Um, I fractured, dislocated, tore both of my um, cruciate ligaments several years ago. So I've been making sure it's as strong as it possibly can be, which involved a lot of squats, deadlifts, things like that. So to do this, when you're lifting heavy weights, I find a good quality weightlifting belt is an absolute must. Why? Because it helps you solidify your abdominal um, kind of section here, which protects your lower back. But more importantly, it allows you to lift higher weights, which is then you're getting larger gains and strength transmitted um, or weight transmitted through your legs, which is going to build, hopefully, more muscle and more strength. Also protects this kind of donut around here keeps you in a really fantastic position. I think it gives you about 15% extra strength on the big lifts, such as deadlift and squat and overhead press. Bench press, not so much, but I think it does, does add. So this is from a brand called Strength Shop. Traditionally, this would be leather, and in a lot of companies it is leather. But this is artificial leather, and it is incredibly strong. It, I actually, I felt leather, um, weightlifting belts in the past from my, one of my trainers and, and friends. I actually think this is, is stiffer than many of them. It's so stiff and it reacts exactly like leather where as you wear it, I've worn this for you know so countless times and it starts to mold into your body very, very slightly. However, it's still incredibly stiff. And this has been rated for over 400 kilo deadlifts, which is absolutely bonkers. So really, really strong. And then this is just metal. So it just shows you even in such kind of a, a, a yeah, strength, strength sport where testosterone and things like that, you don't need her animals to get a fantastic weightlifting belt. Then finally, what is in the bag? So these pair along with a belt. And if you are doing big compound lifts in the weight room, I definitely recommend weightlifting shoes. Why? They put you on a fantastic base these are super rock hard here and also the shoe has laces and then this velcro system which is fantastic for locking your sh foot in so when you're lifting extremely heavy weights you don't want to be wobbling at all i used to lift in bare feet which is great but if you want to take it up another level i definitely recommend these so these are a brand called dowin dowin darwin I have no idea something like that and it's from a, a website called 213kg.com really recommend it if you even try and order the guy rings you up and talks you through the the size which is really great but these i definitely recommend um and you'd think this 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 leather if you saw it it's incredibly smooth it's so so smooth also when i first had it it was incredibly tight but as you start to wear it in i've quite wide toes it breaks them in and just stretches it just like leather however it is not leather, it is called faux nubuck leather, um, which is why it feels so, so soft and it's so quality. I've had this for several months now. They get absolute bashing every time I use them. They get chucked in the bag, but they still look like they come out of the box yesterday. So really, really recommend these. Um, and yeah, I hope that helps. I hope that kind of just shows some of the challenges that I've had finding good quality equipment that doesn't harm animals. And to be honest, I would say most of the time you don't even have to find anything. It, it's just there next to it on the peg, or you have to spend maybe five minutes more on Google or in the shop just going, okay, we can't shop on, we can't have these ones, but if we just walk over to this aisle behind it, we can find um, the vegan um, options, such as that jacket where I just had to delve a little bit deeper in Go Outdoors to find it. But I hope that just shows and hopefully it inspires you just to be um, more confident and excited to find it. There's, there's, uh, in my experience, there's, there's never been a dead end. It feels like that, but then you realise that it's not a dead end. It's a door that you find these new products, new brands that you never knew existed that get the job done 100% vegan. Hope that helps. I'm going to have another video before I leave about some of the food that's going to be plugging the gaps when we're high up at higher altitude in um, some huts so watch for that video let me know down in the comments below what has been your biggest product 
that you thought you could never find a vegan version that you did in the end, as I'd love to know. Also, if they're related to hiking and weightlifting, I'd love to know, um, but any other sector as well, let me know. Hope that helps. Thank you for watching. Of course, we'll see you in the next video.